Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It's Friday, and I tried to learn a new song with only uh, about 15 minutes to go, and I can't get the phrasing right on the second verse. I think I've got the first verse down. I'll try the first verse, and if I feel brave, I'll start into the second verse. And if I mess it up, I'll just stop. <laughs> it's just the way it is. I have no pride. I bet you've heard this before. It's four in the morning and once more the dawning Just woke up the wanting in me Wishing I'd never met her Knowing if I'd forget her How much better off she would be the longer I hold on, the longer this goes on, the harder that it's gonna be. But it's four in the morning, and once more the dawning just woke up the warning in me. I never deserved her, God knows when I hurt her, that's the last thing that I want to do. She tries, but she can't tell how she feels, but I know too well what she's going through. If I love her so much, I don't know why I can't do the right thing and just let her be. That's the messed up. But it's four in the morning and once more the dawning just woke up the warning in me. <laughs> I knew I was going to screw up the phrasing on that second verse. That is a there's a lot of words to cram in there if if you're not used to doing it. You know, it's it's not that hard. It's just I'm not used to it. And I I literally learned learned it. You know what I learned there in in just the 15 minutes. And and on top of that, Jr. walks in and interrupts me while I'm trying to learn it. <laughs> so I really only had about five minutes at, at or probably less than that in total. But anyway, I didn't even make it all the way through the whole song twice. So, and, uh, it, you know, it just is what it is. I just wanted to try it. I th it's a pretty cool song. It's a song I hadn't heard in years. And it just popped up in my feed this morning when I was watching YouTube videos. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to show and tell this morning. So let's just get to it. And then we'll get into the comments. Um... First thing is, uh, we got the new microphone, as you can see. I don't know what you think about it, but uh, I like it pretty well. Um, you know, I've got some learning curves with it and stuff. It's good for close-up vocals. It's not good for picking up anything outside of that. And sort of that's good in one way because I can have my furnace running, which it's running right now, and I don't think you're going to hear it much, though you probably can. I don't know. Um, and if, if you can, just comment, and I'll turn, it, for, turn the furnace off. But anyway, um, here's the uh, first little clip I've got for you this morning. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here we go. Here we go. Whew. Pick it up. Bring it here. Good girl. Good girl. Sit. 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 Come on. Sit. 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 Can you sit? You're too excited. It's the first thing we've done this morning. Give it here. Give it here. Give it here. Come here. Bring it here. Come on. Bring it here. Bring it here. Good girl. Give it here. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Whew. Go pick it up. Bring it here. Good girl. Yeah, good girl. Yeah, good girl. Here, give it here. Okay, can you sit? Sit, sit, sit. Yeah, good girl. Can you shake? Nope, shake. Yeah, good girl. Oh, you still want to bite, though. Good job, good job. <laughs> well, she's learning. I wish there was uh, more antler just laying around that we could discover and have her uh, find. That would be good. It would really be very important right now, especially. So I'm probably just going to have to take a bunch of antler out there, plant it in different places, and then walk around and find it. Um, you know, pretend like it's 
just being found <laughs> type thing. Um, I did another little project yesterday, and here that is. Well, one more project checked off. There's some shelves up there now. Those are uh, eight foot long and about four foot tall, roughly. Uh, maybe a little taller than that, actually. But uh, anyway, that'll provide a lot of storage space. Yeah, and they're, uh, the shelves are 14 inches deep. And so we have a lot of stuff. And I'm sure we'll have that filled up in no time at all. Uh, let's see. I had uh, The last thing I had was a, another little contraption. We've been showing some of the contraptions lately. <laughs> So I've got another little contraption. This one won't apply to too many people, but anybody that's, uh, you know, working on a fiddle bow or trying to do their own fiddle bow work um, might find this handy. And all I did was just take a drill, you know, a hand drill, one of these little deals, and mount it to a board. You can see how I mounted it there. I just drilled a hole through, put some uh, cable clamps around it, and tightened it down, you know, uh, or... Uh, pipe clamps around. I don't know what you call those things. Hose clamps. That's what they are. Yeah, words. Anyway, so what this, the way this works is you would mount it to your bench like right here and you would put, you'd clamp it down to your bench. So this is, hit, this is facing me here. So I could spin this like so. So, and then, and then what you do is you take your fiddle bow and uh, of course, you don't have your frog on here and you don't have the leather grip on here. That's what the purpose of this is to make a new grip. So you would slide your bow in through this little contraption. And this is just a piece of wood with a hole in it. And, and I just, you know, shaped it like that. And that way I can clamp this to the top of the desk also. So I run this through here like so. Then I run, you know, I've got this clamp to the desk and I run this into this tubing piece here. And then I tighten this clamp down. And, you know, you don't have, to, this is the tip of the bow way out here. This is the handle of the bow down here. And so, so now it's like this. And now I can spin this and it will spin the whole bow. Now you think, well, why do you need to do that? Well, I'll, I'll show you why you need to do that. Then you take some, you know, some, some bows are wrapped with silver wire. This is just what I had handy. So I just brought this out. So you can take your silver wire, silv, silver wire, and I'm probably not close enough to the mic. You can take your silver wire and you can uh, then start it around there. And then you can spin this and this will just wrap it tightly all the way down. And, you, you know, you won't have any airspace in your wire that way. I mean, you could do it by hand, but it would take you forever. So this spins it much faster. And then you can just put your wire on there and just w run your wire down. And then you tie it off at the end. And I'm, again, that's beyond the scope of what I'm trying to show you. I'm just showing you the contraption. How to actually do it, you have to figure that on your, out on your own if you've never done it. But I do have a video or two out there where I think I actually show using that. And um, in addition, you know, or in, in lieu of the wire, sometimes you want a little uh, thin uh, leather uh, uh, string like... Um, like the sewing leather that you use for uh, saddle stitching or some stuff where you put the leather around the edges of your <sighs> words, where you stitch with the, uh, it's not thread. I, I, again, I can't think of the terms. I used to know them all because I did leather work for years too. But anyway, you just stitch, use that kind of lacing. Lacing is the word I was looking for. So you take that leather lacing and you can wrap that around the bow. Um, it's long, thin leather lacing. And again, having that just helps make it nice and even and uh, just makes it easier, just an easier task. So it's just another contraption I thought I would show you. And, uh, you know, it's not hard to build or anything. And of course, the hardest part is just coming up with a hand drill like that. And uh, sometimes you can find them at flea markets. Sometimes you can, well, I mean, I think they still sell them. I think you can probably buy one off eBay if you really needed one. Or you could use a substitute. There's other things you could use. I mean, you could do it with electric. Uh, you could do it with one of those like rotisseries for, um, uh, for a barbecue grill. That little rotisserie motor would spin, it'll spin kind of slow, but you could do it electric that way. And if it spins a little slow, that's not that big a deal if you're only doing one or two of them. Um, anyway, so 
that's just, just some ideas again, thinking out of the box again. Uh, who's this guy at the top? Rod Wintler. Have I heard of him? <laughs> uh, Gary Hyden's second. Uh, he's starting to kind of uh, be second a lot, or at least in the top few. And then Carolyn Fike's always right up there, too. Uh, let's see. Uh, moving on down. <clears throat> <laughs> it's a bit hard to time because I don't put up at the same time every day. Well, yeah, as far as the making it go live, um, yeah, or whatever you want to call it, uh, putting up the early thing, uh, that, that can vary. It varies for a lot of reasons, too. <laughs> but I can't make that exactly right every day. Well, unless I were to get up and start doing this at maybe 5 o'clock or something, or 6 o'clock at least. Um, anyway, moving on down, are, do I see any question marks this morning or are we going to have an extremely short one? <laughs> Kenneth Ennis, hope all is well. Keep chirping and give us your video, or, uh, giving us your videos. God bless. Well, thank you. Moving on down a little further. Uh, after we went live, Bill Mumbo says, uh, hope Bigfoot doesn't come and kiss you today <laughs> yeah that's the only bigfoot that's around here you're right you're exactly right when i say there's no bigfoot technically i'm lying because i would call him a bigfoot he's a great big guy <laughs> uh, i forgot to mention that bruce ducker was the first one after we went live um okay let's see moving on down any other question marks it looks like this is gonna be a short one today <laughs> david tharp Mike works fine, makes the chirping sound even better. Well, it should be a good quality vocal mic. I mean, that part of it should be good. Um, do I have it all set right yet? Am I using it all correctly? Maybe not, but eventually we'll work out all the bugs. Uh, Ronald Todd's sounding good for 8 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Uh, Joe says, he, nope, he doesn't hear the furnace. Well, you shouldn't with this kind of mic. Uh, now, with that other mic, uh, this, it picks up everything. You know, this thing picks up everything. So, yeah, th that's a totally different th technology. Um, this one, you and I have to stay close to the mic or it's not going to work. If I walk over to the cabinet and try to talk to you, you're not going to hear me very well. You might hear a whisper, but that'd be about it. Uh, let's see. Moving on down a little further. Um, Chris Tia Thomason says, Sadie is doing so well. What a sweet pup. She, yeah, she really is. I mean, like I said, as a, pu as a pet, if somebody just wanted her as a family dog pet, she's a straight up and down 10. There's no question. Uh, that's not what I wanted her for. And uh, I know people think, oh, well, you're still falling in love with her. Well, yeah, I mean, I like her. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't go so far as to say I've fallen in love with her. But anyway, that's just me. I can't help it. That's just the way I am. When you, when you clean as many dog pens as I did and got as many whippings for not getting them clean enough, uh, you would understand. <laughs> uh, Steve Harris says she's doing great. Yeah, she really is. Overall, she's doing pretty good. Be a little better now than I was thinking she was ever going to achieve. I really thought there for a while this isn't, isn't going to work. <laughs> but it's, it's, I'm a little more optimistic now. And, and truly, I need to spend more time with her. I just don't spend very much time with her. She's doing really good for the little bit of time I've spent. Ben Boyd, uh, my wife walked in while you were singing and said, sounds like Marty Robbins, so I guess your chirping isn't that bad after all. <laughs> well, Marty Robbins, I've said before, of all the male singers, he was probably my favorite overall uh, country male singer. Merle Haggard's my overall um, performer and, and songwriter and singer too. I mean, he's, you know, he's good all the way around. But if I'm just going on the vocal, I would have to say Marty Robbins was my favorite. So I'll take that as high praise. Um, Jeff Puris, microphone sounds good. You really need to stay close. Yes, I know that, but it's going to be difficult with me as being who I am. Um, let me drop this chair down just a hair. Okay. Um, when you reach over the bench, don't say anything important. <laughs> um, Bruce Ducker. Jerry, you don't really have to get up 
on the mic, it picks up pretty good when you are comfortably sitting. Yeah, I'm about six inches from it now, and I'm not talking directly into it. Technically, these mics are meant to be like this, but I don't feel comfortable having it directly in front of me. I, that just doesn't work for me for, in a situation like this. Not for me. It's just, it's more of just a preference or a comfort thing. I, I don't know. I, it wouldn't be too bad if I could have it hanging above me, pointing at me, maybe. That wouldn't be too bad, but I don't have that mic yet or, or that kind of stand. I probably need to get one of those boom stands for this kind of mic would be better. Um, I'd feel better, actually, if it was hanging up here pointed this way. I'd be okay with that, I think. But then again, that's going to block my view to wh what I'm seeing on the screen and stuff. So, I don't know. I, this is probably just as good. The only thing about this is it keeps very slowly going down. And I've tightened the mic stand four or five times already this morning. And I put counterweights on it, too, just to try to keep it. And it still just keeps slowly dropping. It's really slow, but it keeps going down. Just one of them things. Just, it, you know, it can't just be easy. It has to be complicated. All right, moving on. Uh, Dave Tackett says, uh, just wanted to thank you for the boiled lins linseed oil tip. My 70-year-old uh, Roy Rogers guitar looks like new. Really soaked it up. Not much uh, left to wipe off. Yeah, it's a, it's a good thing. Um, any old, you know, if you just like go to a flea market and you just buy an old beat up fiddle, wipe it down with linseed oil, boil linseed oil. You, yeah, it, it makes them look 20, 50 years, 100 years younger. <laughs> you know, it really does. It makes them look a lot better. Uh, Michael Peters has got a long one there, but I don't see any question marks. Well, he's got, it looks like he's commenting though so let me read it good morning i was watching one of your guitar repair videos you demonstrated how you string a guitar do you have a video where you show in detail how how you do that well actually michael i have quite a few uh videos where i show that can i tell you which ones they are no i cannot um but there's a lot of them um Eddie could comment. Eddie knows them all. <laughs> Eddie, if you're out there, help. Uh, tell him which one. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, it's really sad. When you've got as many videos out there as I have, which we're probably getting close to 2,000, if not that many already, especially when you consider the vlogs and everything. Uh, yeah, I don't know which ones are which. I, you know, if I knew then what I know now, maybe I'd have done better, but I didn't do well enough on that area. Bill Dedrick, uh, Jerry, did you happen to see the Wednesday Acoustic Shop video with John Chapman, 12-year-old daughter? No, I did not. She is very impressive. Great voice. No, I have not heard that yet. I, I'm looking forward to listening to that. Yeah, those, those Chapmans, they're talented. They're just flat talented. Gotta fly, Lee. You must have zoomed in the camera there is a black frame on the top and right side of the screen now. It is, um, oh, I'll tell you what it is. It's, it's gotten moved. That's what it is. I'm glad you said that. Let me, uh, let me see if I can make this fit the screen properly here. Is that better? Yeah, it, it just got accidentally moved is what happened. The screen did. Um, I'm glad you said that, though, because I didn't notice it. See, I'm... You know, you know I'm colorblind. Well, I can't see. There's, there's like a dark charcoal, and then there's a black or whatever, and it just blends together. And I don't notice it until you point it out. And then I kind of look at it, and I go, oh, yeah, I see something there, you know. But I don't see it unless somebody <laughs> points it out. Um, Hugh O'Connor, I had operations for... Uh, Doopy trends, or is that what you're talking about there? Uh, about five years ago, it went well, but the little finger tends to move towards the other fingers when you contract it. Would the mandolin course still be any use? Well, 
I don't know, Hugh. I, you know, it's hard to say, answer that to be truthful with, with your condition, but you can play the mandolin without using the little finger. So, yes, I mean, from that standpoint, you could learn everything you need to learn still and, and do just fine without using your little finger. You just, whenever I show using the little finger, just, you just basically leave it off. The difference would be that you try not to hit the open string any more than you have to. I mean, sometimes, like if you're in G and you've got an open string, then that G chord would be fine, you know. And there's other chords where G fits in and it wouldn't be no big deal. And I'm going to raise this back up again. <laughs> I don't see how that can possibly uh, keep going down as tight as I've made that. I'm going to try to tighten it a little bit. Well, it's about as tight as I can get it. I don't know. It's crazy. But uh, anyway, yeah, you could probably go through the course and be just fine and just know that you don't have to use your little finger. Um, it's, it's preferred that you do, but you don't have to. Um, yeah, that Doopy Trends, if you, if you don't know what he's talking about there, that's this deal right in here. You can probably see it in my hand a little bit. But I have, uh, you know, I was fortunate to be diagnosed with that very early on. Um, in fact, I pointed out to the doctor. I said, doctor, I have this callus that's always here, and I don't know why that callus is there. I said, I don't recall doing anything that should cause a callus there. And he looked at it, and he just, he, one second, he goes, oh, you've got Doopy Trends contraction. He says, you're in the early stages. And that's what he said. Just instantly he said that. He said, and, I, and, and then he wanted to tell me how that disease manifests, or whatever you want to call that. I don't know if it's a disease, but you know what I'm saying. Anyway, he, he, you know, he says that what happened, happens is this draws up and it draws your finger down like this and you can't you know it's it's not trigger finger it's different than that it, it's it just draws your hand closed and it, it'll actually can draw more than one finger but it's primarily the ring finger on the right hand and anyway it uh, or uh, in my case it's on the right hand now I have it a little bit in my left hand but it's really prevalent in my right hand and anyway, I said, well, you know, after he explained it all and told me all about it, I said, well, what would happen if I stretch it like this every day? And he says, well, I ain't never had anybody try that. He says, but if I were you, as early as we've caught this, I would stretch it every day. And uh, you can see I have. I've stretched it every day, and that's, this was diagnosed in the mid-90s. And it really hasn't gotten much worse. Um, there, were, there are times when you get lazy and you forget, you know, and you forget to stretch. And when I forget to stretch, um, I'm not making this up. I'm telling you, you can feel, you know what a BB is? It feels exactly like there's a BB under my skin in my finger. I mean, like I can, I can roll it around. It's, it, it, it feels exactly like a steel BB in there. And then when I remember that I forgot to stretch, well, then I start stretching it. I, you have to do it slowly when, you're, when you've got a problem, you know. And so you stretch, you know, maybe a little bit, and then you work up to it. And eventually, over a day or two or a couple of days, then you finally get it stretched back out. And as long as you keep stretching it, you can probably be fine just like that. Um, and, and the people that already have it severely, I doubt that stretching will even work. But if it's not too severe, if I were you, I'd just, ver just start stretching. Just start stretching and just work up to it. You know, you're not going to get it all in one day. It, if it took you 10 years to get it like that, you're not going to get it straightened out in one day. You know, it's going to take you maybe a year to get it straightened back out. But I bet you if you work on it slowly, I bet you you can stretch it back out. That's just me talking. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But anyway, uh, the only other real alternative to it is after it gets so bad, you, they, you know, have operations. I think there's some newer kinds of operations, and I think there's some newer treatments for it now. You know, I don't, I haven't kept up on that because I don't have that issue. I'm, I'm able to keep it straightened out by just stretching it. Now, I'll tell you another place that's good to stretch it is when you're, uh, in the car, you, uh, str I stretch it on the steering wheel. I stretch like that. And uh, you can feel it. it. It almost feels like it's tearing, you know, sometimes. It, uh, you got to be careful. You don't want to go over, overdo it. 
All right, well, I beat that to death. But anyway, it's a fairly common thing. I've met dozens of people that have it, just dozens. And it's, uh, they say it comes from the Vikings, from the Scandinavian, you know, people in that area. And, um, you know, I, when my brother did the uh, DNA test, I haven't ever done it, but it showed that we were kind of a mix of everything. So um, that's probably where it came from. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you're just being silly. I guess you are. Will, uh, William Pagan says, do you ever use hide glue? <laughs> uh, if you're new, then you probably don't know, but no, I don't use hide glue. Um, the only three or four things I've ever glued with hide glue have broken. Now, let me just say, conversely, and at least to my knowledge, and I've said this before, at least to my knowledge, and, you know, I've glued things countless, countless, countless things over 40 years, and not one single one of those things has ever broken when I've glued it with tight bond. And I've only glued four or five things with hide glue, and all of those things have broken. That ought to tell you something. I mean, some, that bell ought to go off there somewhere for somebody. Hide glue absolutely sucks canal water. I mean, it was the best glue you could get when Stradivari used it. And I, I would have used it back then, too. I'd have probably still been complaining about it, but I would have used it back then, too. But we've got a lot better choices now. And I would recommend strongly that you use better choices. That's just me. But if you prefer to keep using hide glue, just knock yourself out. I got no problem with that. That's totally your choice. I won't hurt me one bit. Got to fly Lee says that works. So I guess you're talking about me moving the screen around. Yeah, well, I'm glad somebody pointed that out there. Or if, if that was you that pointed it out. Yep, it was you. Um, let's see. Moving on down. Um, Thomas McAlpin. Uh, Good morning. Do you play any John uh, Prine? I, it says Pine, but I think you mean Prine. Uh, fish and whistle would suit you to a T. Well, honestly, I don't know a lot of John Prine. I, I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. I, I never cared for the few tunes I've heard. Um, you know, everybody likes uh, Paradise, and I don't like that song. I don't know why I don't like the song, but I don't like the song. And, uh, and lots and lots and lots and lots of people jam to that. And I've played it a gazillion times in my life, but I just don't care for that song. So, you know, that's probably why I haven't really gotten into John Prine. I know he's hugely popular. Um, I'm not knocking him, really. It's just when you, you ask me a direct question, I'm going to give you a direct answer. I just never have gotten into him. Um, Ben Boyd changed my Martin guitar saddle to antler. It's noticeably brighter now. Didn't expect a big change, but I love it. Well, good. Um, it's hard to beat antler. I, you know, I'm trying to think if I've ever had anybody say, no, I don't like the antler, uh, when, once I put it in. And there's probably been one or two. And on a mandolin, I'm, pro I'm fairly sure there's been a few um, on a mandolin. But on a guitar, I don't think I've ever had anybody say, no, I don't like the antler. Um, don't think I ever have. Rod Wintler, I think your mic is overloading and spattering at times. Don't want to sound negative. Okay. Uh, I have it turned up pretty hot because I didn't know. You know, I, I know this mic um, is difficult. You know, it, it, you know it's just learn, it's a learning curve. Um, I can see now I'm going to a minus 12. That's probably where it ought to be. I see it's peaking occasionally. So I'll turn it down just a hair more and see if that works okay. But thanks for pointing it out because, like I said, I, I cannot tell what's coming out. Um, I didn't show you, but I got the cloud lifter. That's this thing here. Now, the cloud lifter is kind of unusual. It's a, it's a, 
I don't know, it's like an inline preamp is what it amounts to. And I thought, well, how does that do anything? Because there's no uh, electric cord going to it. Well, it uses the uh, 48 volts of phantom power. And uh, so it robs the phantom power from this interface. So this has the phantom power that you can see down here, 48 volt right there. And uh, anyway, so that's what's powering this little deal. This is what's giving power to this microphone. It's complicated. But, but the thing about it is I cannot use the cloud interface with this microphone because, <laughs> because this microphone does require 48 volts phantom power. And that cloud uh, deal uh, robs the power away and it won't let it go to this mic. So, I mean, it's complicated. It's simple, but it's complicated. <laughs> and again, this is falling down again. I'll have to do something better for tomorrow. But anyway, uh, or for Monday, I guess. Um, moving on down. Uh, hopefully the mic's a little bit better. It's not bouncing too much in the red there. Again, it's hard for me to tell the red too, because this thing goes, I don't know what colors it is. Uh, it's, it's going across there and I can tell it's changing color but it's hard for me to tell the difference in some of the colors and to tell if it's really staying in the red or not. But it, it doesn't look like it's too bad right now. So I'm going to just assume that this is about right. Let me know if, if it's too hot or too cold. Um, Jeff Pierce, I was changing strings on a guitar and noticed the nut was loose. Does the nut 100% need to be glued down? Um, hmm. You know, I typically glue them in, but I've had them loose and it, it doesn't really bother me and I don't really hear much difference. I would say it would depend on how well it fits the spot. If it fits the spot really good and it's not bouncing around, wiggling around, like if you, if you kind of put your hand on it when it's, when it's not glued and you move it around, and I'm talking unstrung, of course, and it fits really snug and it's not moving, then I don't think it, the glue is that big a deal. If it's kind of got some rock into it, well, first of all, you probably shouldn't have any rock into it, but if it does, then for sure you're going to want to glue it down. But you probably should try to fix the rocking where it fits perfectly. And then, of course, it's, it's, a, it's a dog chasing its tail because if you fix the, the rocking out of it, then more than likely you're going to drop it some more, and then you're going to probably have to make a whole new nut. So it's, it's a never-ending vicious circle. So... I would just say if it fits really, really snug and tight, then you probably don't have to worry so much about the glue. But if it doesn't, for sure the glue. And if you want to go f pursuing the rest of that, well, good luck chasing your tail because it's a, almost a never-ending chase. Uh, Blackjack Guitar, good morning, Jerry. Yeah, that mic does doesn't like gravity <laughs> well or, or it does like it one of the two <laughs> depending on which way you look at it it likes to go down for sure yeah it just keeps very slowly i mean you can't even see it doing it it just just slowly does it but anyway uh, i'll figure something out better for that uh bill webb uh, i'm a big fan of john prine he's the reason i play guitar and write the song uh, and sing songs well that's good bill I, I like i said i got nothing against the guy uh, i just really haven't heard anything that i just that you know everybody's different what trips your trigger in songs and music doesn't necessarily trip the next guy's trigger in songs and music you know how it is and uh, you know i i love sierra hull somebody out there might not like sierra hull i think she's great so I, everybody's different you know um, Captain Bubba, have you have got the fiber cable run to the house yet? That was what I was planning to do today, believe it or not. I'm not lying. I was planning to start that job today. I, actually, I've got two other jobs in front of it, but I was hoping to knock them out pretty quick. One of them is I'm still working on my sink in there. I found out that not only did that manifold break that I showed a day or two ago, um, but also the sink faucet itself broke. So now I have to replace the faucet. So I was going to replace that. 
And then there's another thing that uh, the reason all of that broke is because that furnace won't stay on out there. It keeps kicking off. And I suspect that it's got something to do with the thermostat. And I'm using a regular wall thermostat. And I found out that that type of furnace needs a heavy duty type thermostat because it's an electric uh, garage heating type furnace. So I bought a, a heavy duty thermostat last night and I was going to install that also. And hopefully that'll keep that furnace on and then all this won't freeze up again. Never any circle. Well, as I'm telling you all that, you know, as I was getting ready this morning, JR walks in and he constantly has projects he wants me to do. Like I don't have nothing to do, you know. And so he wants me to work on a, a new or a baler he wants me to weld it up and, and then he wants me to uh rebuild wood on uh his new cart that he's got for oliver to put in the parade he wants me to fix up all the wood on that <laughs> it's like are you kidding me i've got so many projects and sue's got every bit as many projects for me to do as i've got on my thing and you know i'm wanting to get back to the water wheel and everything and JR just constantly is asking me to do stuff. Just constantly. I mean, it's every day. <sighs> do you know why I say it's not easy being me? <laughs> um, okay, John says the uh, mic volumes uh, finally sounds louder and better. Well, okay. I hope it does. Zappa says, Jerry, to keep the mic from falling, attach the weighted end of the boom to the stalk? I don't know. There's a, a, there is no real boom on this mic. I've, I've added weight to the back of it, uh, you know, to try to counterbalance it. And that's about the best you can do with this little thing. Um, I've got it. I have it slid this way an awful long way. So this arm is sticking out a long way. So there's a lot of leverage here. And that's the problem is there's a lot of leverage. And it's a cheap, uh, cheap mic stand. It's not an expensive mic stand. I probably gave all of 15 to $20 for it. So, you know, you get what you pay for. <clears throat> Wade Hampton, Jerry, I think the microphone volume is too low now. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's going to feel different about these things. And, you know, a lot of it's in how your system is set up at your house. But um, I don't know. It looks, like it's, it looks like it's about right to me based on everything I can see here. So I don't know. You know. Uh, Bill says, I should listen to John Prine singing Diamonds in the Rough. Well, I'll try to remember to do that. Carolyn Fike. Problem is, Jerry, you are just too talented a Mr. Fixer. Well, I do know that's what the grandkids all say. They all say, take it to Grandpa. Take it to Grandpa. <laughs> Doesn't matter what it is. I don't care what it is. They, take it to Grandpa. He can fix it. <sighs> Let's see. I missed somebody. Uh, Jam, Jambone Jim. I don't remember seeing your name before. Jambone Jim. I have a 1960 D28. Is it okay with heavy gauge strings? Nope. Um, I can answer that right now. Nope. Heavy gauge strings are never okay. Never. I've uh, used straight ups uh, enhanced bass on it for the last couple of months. No pulling on the top, obvious, but I'm always a bit worried. I, I'm just telling you straight up and down, do not use heavy strings on your martin guitar period just end of discussion do what you want it's your guitar do what you want but if you're asking my opinion i'm telling you black and white 100 percent do not use heavy strings on your martin guitar use mediums at the most and i these days i'm suggesting that everybody try the lights uh even lights are so much better for your guitar and there's been a number of people that have tried them recently and said you know what you were right i like the lights uh you see long time ago you see everybody has these again it's 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 the myths and where things get started and then they perpetuate and years ago and and rightfully so I, I'll, I'll just say right now that it's 100% correct. Years ago, the light strings sounded like putting rubber bands on a cigar box. They were terrible. 
these days, phosphor bronze light strings are made very well, and they sound really good. And if you haven't tried them in 15 or 20 years, I would say try them again. And, you know, it won't hurt nothing to try them. Uh, it'll just cost you a few bucks to try them. And if you like them, you're, you're being your guitar's best friend. But for sure, absolutely 1,000% do not use heavy strings. Just don't do it. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Yeah, DE says, I need to learn how to clone myself. And I, you know, I've, I, I used to have a chemistry lab <laughs> when I was a kid. Oh, boy, I did some stupid experiments back then. <laughs> my, uh, my chemistry lab, I'm going to raise this up, sorry. My chemistry lab was in my mom and dad's attic of their house. And uh, it was just a unfinished attic it was just a mess and uh, I had a big table up there <laughs> and I would often in the summertime it get pretty hot you know so I would often sit in the window it was the peak like this well there was a window in the peak it was a big attic but it was you know a window in the peak so I'd have the table pulled right over to the window and I would use the window as my chair and I'd sit in the window <laughs> well uh it wasn't me that, that, all, that almost did this, but it, it was, you know, I was amongst it or a part of it, I guess you'd say. But one of my, the neighborhood kids there, we were making our own gunpowder. <laughs> that would be your first clue right there. We were making our own gunpowder, and it wasn't very good. I mean, it wasn't real potent, powerful stuff, but it worked. It sort of, kind of, you know. I mean, it was, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, it was about a 4 in terms of power. But anyway, um, the, one of the neighborhood kids, he struck a match, and we were um, lighting Bunsen burners or something. I don't remember what now. It's so wonderful we didn't burn the house down, of course. But anyway, he was doing something with this match, and, and he wasn't looking where he set it. And, he, and he, he shook it like this to put it out, and he set it down. And guess it was, we had a little tiny beaker f full of <laughs> gun, gunpowder. <laughs> And he said it right in there. Well, of course, wouldn't you know, that would be the one time when it would really actually work pretty good. And it, you know, it doesn't blow up when you do that because it's not compressed. So it starts shooting sparks out. And it shot sparks out probably two foot tall. And, and and keep in mind, he's sitting in this window. He's the neighborhood kid. And he, he just, whoa, like this. It scared him. And he falls. He's fallen backwards out of this window. And he's, you know, it's, I don't know, probably... 15 feet off the ground something like that and uh fortunately his feet hooked under the table and uh kept him from falling out <laughs> so i had to run over there and grab him pretty quick and pull him back in but well, that's that's why i'm so messed up <laughs> because of my childhood anything that i did you know wouldn't have been normal you know we just we never did anything normal um uh let's see the outboard tinker did jr quit his job he's clean shaven uh, i don't know he says he hasn't i i just don't know i don't know he, he it's really hard because he's he's he said well i think he's still working because he said that today was the only day he has off for a few days and so i don't know Anyway, I just don't know, to be truthful. He, it's, you, who knows what's going on. Um, moving on down. Uh, somewhere around generally where you keep your mic level is perfect. I always have a little room to turn it up uh, a little more or down a little more. Okay. Uh, Chip Wood. Um, Morning, Jerry. Do you make any drawings for your big builds like your water wheel? Um, I, I probably will do something with the water wheel. Um, I probably won't make a drawing for it because I've built so many buildings. I know how I want to build it, and I'll just go build it. It ain't that big a deal for building a building like that. Now, for the water wheel itself, for putting that wood around there, around that 
uh, steel wheel because I, I think I'm going to take wood around the outer edge of the steel wheel and make wooden buckets and things because it'll look neater uh, with the spokes in the center. I think it'll look pretty cool. So for that, I might do a drawing, but, but I didn't even do a drawing for my sawmill. I mean, I absolutely did it all from scratch. And the, uh, now I did kind of make a, well, I don't know if I'd make a drawing, but I did math and kind of a drawing when I did the uh, band for the wheels and separating the wheels so I'd get the right size band because I wanted to make sure I got a standard size band for the, for the bandsaw sawmill. I didn't want to have to have a custom made blade, you know, kind of thing. So I did do some pretty in-depth drawings and math on that. But other than that, every other part of the sawmill was just right there. And uh, I've had so many people ask me for plans on that. Could you send me your plans on that? Uh, I'd have to have a lobotomy. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike says, what string gauge do you consider light? Um, just your standard Martin lights or standard uh, um, GHS lights, standard, you know, your standard stuff. And I think, you know, I'm... As, you know, it's hard for me to remember ever, all these details, but I think they're, <clears throat> I think they're like 12s to 52s, something like that. I think 13 to 56 is your standard and, uh, or your medium, I should say. And I think 12 to 52, I think that's it. Um, but uh, about like that or 54, it might be 54. But anyway, right around in that gauge, 12 to say 54, anything that's lighter than 13 to 56 would be fine. But, you know, it's just that you're just reducing a little bit of pressure is all you're doing. Uh, now, they do make custom lights, and I actually like some of the custom lights also. You can experiment around, um, but just a little lighter is all I'm saying. I'm not saying, you know, set the world on fire and go real, real light. That's not what I'm saying. But anything you reduce in terms of pressure is good for your guitar. And like I said, the new strings are good. The old ones, they just suck canal water. Those old lights years ago, that's why people didn't like them. They, they didn't work, but they do work now. So you should think about it. <clears throat> uh, let's see, moving on down. Rod Wintler, hey Jerry, I made gunpowder as a kid too. Amazing, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, I, I never did very good at it. We, I don't think it was ever good enough to shoot in a gun or anything, but it was, it was just, you know, kids being kids, you know, trying crazy stuff. Uh, Bruce Ducker, breathing, burning, saltpeter explains a lot. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, probably does. Zappa, Jerry, when I was a kid, I used to hit rolls of caps with a hammer. <laughs> yeah, we did that too. I have to tell you, we did a lot of that too. We had a lot of cap guns growing up. Um, light gauge is usually 12 to 54. Okay, all right. Well, like I said, I can't remember. Uh, standard lights are 12 to 53. So, uh, you know, and again, it just depends on the brand. There's going to be different ones. But I think I think the 12 to 54 sounds about right to me. So I think if you're using that, I think, you know, you're going to hardly notice any difference. First of all, they're not that much lighter. Second of all, just any amount of less gauge there drops the tension just a little bit on your top. And, you know, some people would argue then, and, I, and I'm probably one of them, that, you know, uh, more tension is gives you more volume. But there's very little difference, and it, 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 you're just being your own best friend when you use lights versus the mediums. You should at least try them. You shouldn't just rule it out saying, no, you cannot use lights. Well, you just don't know that unless you've tried it recently. long time ago, you would be right. Bill Mumbo, I use 11s to 52s and have done that for years. That's a good, you know, that's fine, and if it works for you, that's really good. Cap and Bubba, we have oxygen and it's settling filled balloons, <laughs> railroad torpedoes with a sledgehammer. Yeah, I've uh, yeah I've popped a few things with the oxygen and settling type things too myself. Um, my torch presently is uh, oxygen and propane instead of acetylene, but acetylene's pretty fun to. It pops pretty good. <laughs> 
uh, D, uh, Zappa, my brother and I would do that too with rolls of caps. Maybe that is why he wears hearing aids today. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'll tell you one more uh, quick story and then I'm going to let everybody go here. We got 198 viewers. That's a lot. Um, I'll tell you this quick story. It's, um, it, it involves uh, explosives. It involves uh, real loud noise, of course, and uh, it involves a dog. Uh, it involves waking up the whole neighborhood and absolutely 100% could have been deadly. But fortunately, it wasn't. Um, at my house that we were living in before we moved here down to the farm, it was out in Wildwood, Missouri. And there was a concrete vault in the ground, and it was about seven feet deep, it, you know, six and a half feet deep. It was just deeper than my head. And I built a roof, I, I poured a concrete uh, roof over it because it was open, it was an open pit. So I poured a concrete roof over it and put a manhole lid in the middle of it. And you could go down in there then and work on the well. Because the well, the, the, uh, the well and everything was down in there. And I think this was, I'm trying to remember, was this a jet pump well? I think it was. I can't remember now. But anyway, some kind of well. And I'd often have to get down in there and work on it. So, but I didn't like the open thing because rain got in there, you know, dirt and animals could fall in just anything it was just a mess so you know putting a concrete lid on it and putting a you know thing seemed to make all kinds of sense it's, it just seemed to be the right thing to do well <clears throat> unbeknownst to me the propane line that came from the big propane tank ran right next to that and i didn't know it but it was an iron line the old iron pipe which nobody does that you know but it was, that's what it was. In the ground, it was an old iron pipe. Well, if you know anything about iron pipe, you know it's going to rust through. And sure enough, apparently it did. And, you know, with that open, those fumes would just come out it, or, or, you know, just dissipate. But with that closed in, somehow the cracks in the walls or whatever were letting that propane in there. Unbeknownst to me, didn't know it, never smelled it or anything. But apparently, the, you know, the leak got worse over time, and maybe I hadn't been down in there for six months. I don't know. You know, I, I can't remember the exact scenario anymore. But suffice it to say, enough propane got in there, and then <laughs> that pump kicked on in the middle of the night, <clears throat> and kaboom, like you ain't never heard. I mean, it was the loudest explosion. We're in bed, and we're... I don't know, we're probably close to 100 feet away from it. And it shook the house completely. Sue wakes up screaming, and she's just screaming. She's in hysterics. I mean, she, she just, she's just screaming. She, she can't stop. And I finally just grab her and shake her and say, stop. And I'm trying to listen to see what else is going on, you know. Because, I mean, it, it was crazy. <laughs> and then, okay, so my ears are ringing and everything. I mean, it was in the middle of the night, dead sleep. I look out the front window and um, I can see lights all the way up and down the highway. And we lived right off the main highway, uh, Highway 100. And I could see down to the neighbors almost a full mile away. And I could see lights coming on on every house. And I'm going, golly, something happened. What was that? You know, I thought maybe a plane crashed. Now, about this time, this, my senses are starting to come back, you know, <laughs> and I'm listening. And the whole time, <laughs> this is super funny. I'm, the whole time I'm listening, I'm going, I'm hearing, I'm hearing this sound. I'm hearing. Just, it's just a faint. You can hear it's a faint like bark. Well, we had a great big dog. <laughs> I can't even remember what kind of dog he was. A big black dog. I mean, this thing was big. He's like a bear. In fact, I think, I can't remember what we called him at that time. Did we call him Conan or, I don't remember. I, I can't even remember his name, honestly. Again, me and pets, we, you know, it, it was Sue's pet or, you know, it was a family pet. It wasn't my pet. Well, anyway, um, I'm hearing this rumor. But it was muffled. It was really muffled. 
And it, it sounded like it was a long way away. Well, keep in mind, it's still dark as it can be outside, and you know I'm night blind, so I can't see nothing. So I, I go out in the back, and wonder, what's going on with this? And I still don't know what's happened yet. And I'm, now I can hear this, it's a little bit louder. And I don't, you know, I got my flashlight, and I'm shining, and I see over about, I don't know, 50, 75 feet away from where it used to be, the dog house, and the dog is inside the dog house, and he's going, rrr, rrr. <laughs> well, the, the, the dog house was face down. <laughs> the dog house used to be sitting on top of that concrete lid, <laughs> and that concrete lid, uh, I think it only went straight up and came straight back down. And I think it broke it some. I had a lot of rebar in it, but it didn't, I don't think it broke it too bad. And the concrete, the, the uh, manhole cover was gone. <laughs> I, I, we found it. I mean, it wasn't too far gone. I, it didn't land on the house, fortunately. Um, but anyway, it blew that dog house. And I mean, it, it a big dog. This was not a little dog. This was a big dog. You know, like almost St. Bernard size. Not that quite that big, but, but almost that big. And it blew that dog house like 50, 75 feet. In the, it had to be in the air. And... <laughs> and landed upside down and that old dog he just <laughs> and finally i go over there and of course i realized what had happened at that point then and i raised the dog uh, house up and he just runs out and he's wagging his tail he's just having a good time <laughs> it was crazy i'm seriously telling you that was a major explosion it was lucky yeah, that nobody got killed. Lucky that nobody. Uh, and we had the fire department come out and everything, and, and we determined that that's what the problem was, that the gas had come out of those, out of the line. And so, of course, I replaced all that with copper line and everything. But, yeah, you wonder why I am like I am. <laughs> I could write a book. I really could. There's been so many things happen, and that's just like the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Uh, uh, Chuck Heidberger says uh, railroad torpedoes are as bad as blasting caps. Well, I don't necessarily know what you mean when you say railroad torpedo, but um, I, I'll take your word for it. Um, Chuck says, uh, made cannons as a teenager. People could hear them five miles away. I don't doubt that. Yeah, I, we've monkeyed with little stuff, N nothing really important. Um, he says torpedo are put on tracks and to stop trains sounds like a 12 gauge shotgun going off three or four in a row hmm. I never ever heard of this I don't know what you're talking about really honestly on the torpedo thing uh, Labrador dog no I don't think this was a Labrador it was I don't remember what he was I don't remember I can't even quite remember exactly what he looked like. I know he was solid black and very furry, very heavy, he hairy furry. Um, I, I don't remember. I just don't remember. Like I told you, I, I'm not into pets. Uh, Randy Winters, uh, Diodario Phosphor Bronze 10 to 47 are the best I've ever found and have tried them all. Well, 10 to 47 is very light. I, I don't necessarily, for most acoustic kinds of music that we play, you know, bluegrass and old-time country, I think that's a bit light for, for, for that. It might be perfect for different kinds of music that you're playing or maybe finger style or something. I don't know. But that's a little bit light, I would say. I, I don't necessarily... You know, to try to get people to go from light to that, that would be a huge change. Uh, or, I'm sorry, from medium to that would be a huge change. But from going from mediums to the 12 to 54, that's not that big a change. Um, okay. <laughs> John Warren says, a mighty interesting story. Well, it was, boy, I'm seriously telling you, you can't even imagine how loud that was. I, it's just, you can't imagine. I mean, it was about... I don't know, 50 feet outside our window, something like that. I don't know, maybe it's a little more than that. 
from our end of the house, it might have been a little more than 50 feet. But I don't think it was much more. In fact, I'm pretty sure it wasn't now that I think about it. Uh, I'm trying to remember the layout of that house and everything. Yeah, it probably wasn't even that far. It was probably only about 40 feet. Yeah, crazy. Uh, a char pet, a char pay. Yeah, it, I mean, it kind of reminded you of that a little bit, but I don't remember what kind of dog it was. I really don't remember, and I doubt that even if you tell me, I doubt I'd remember. Carolyn Fike, I bet the dog was a uh, Newfoundland. Yeah, I don't think he was anything exotic. He just was a big old boy. He just was a big dog. And it was a really big house, big dog house. To throw it that far <laughs> and, and to have that big dog in there just... Roo, roo. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. After you, yeah, after you get over the shock, it was just really funny. Well, guys, I'm going to let that be it. Um, 196 viewers still, so I didn't lose too many during that story. <laughs> I'll let you go, and we will see you on Monday, and I'll try to get some kind of video out for the weekend. Though at the moment, with all the projects that I've got stacked up, I don't know how that's going to happen, but I'm going to give it a good try. We'll see you for sure on Monday, if not before.